In this video, you'll learn how to check your password strength with a script in Bash. To get started, we're going to create a new file. We'll call it passwordcheck.sh. And first, we're going to shebang our specified shell. And off screen, what I'm going to do is copy out some styling that we're going to use in this script. I'm going to paste it. Oops. Just like that. And so in this script, we're going to have a warning color. We're going to have a success color. And we're going to need to clear this input for the user. Because if we don't clear the input, the color that is last assigned will then bleed into the rest of the output. So next, I'm going to create a variable called file, and the file is going to be going to a very large text file that contains just a, an enormous amount of passwords that are really known exploitable passwords. And if you're familiar with it, it's called RockU, and so you can check that out on GitHub. It is a really cool tool to use when you're testing your passwords. I'm going to echo out, type in your password, and then we're going to grab the user's input. So these backslash ends will give us a line break, kind of clean it up a little bit. Next, we're going to read the user's input for a variable. We're going to call password, because that makes sense. Next, I'm going to grep out that password as a variable. But before I do that, I'm going to declare the W flag, which gives us a um, sort of like a word search. And this W flag actually looks for sequences. So for example, if I were to type in a password of one, two, three, and so in this database, we have maybe like a password that's uh, 123 S or A or whatever. So that's going to pick it up because it's looking for the sequence, right? So let's call our variable password, and we're going to call that from the file. So here's where this gets kind of fun. We're going to be using a ternary expression to get what we want out of this file, okay? And basically what this is going to look like, so this is going to be our, our true value. So if the password is found in file, then we're going to specify something here. And if it's not, so or, we're going to use the or operator, and this is our false. So for the true value, what we're going to do is we're going to echo out something to the user. We're going to say warning, right? Because basically, if we find their password that they typed in from this, uh, this read input here, in the file, what's going to happen is we're going to give them a little warning message, okay? And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us the variable color for warning. We're going to open up our string do a little line break. And what we're going to do is output the password that the user used. So we're going to grab that variable that they instantiated. And we're going to say that that password, you know, it's an exploitable password. Close the string. And if you remember our color code for clear, right, this is what we're going to use at the very end of the string so that our color from warning doesn't bleed out into the rest of our input or outputs. Sorry. So if this first part doesn't pass, we're going to output another piece of text to the user. We're going to output a success text, so it's going to be in green. And we're going to say that the password doesn't look like a known. Oops. And we're going to need to clear this color again. So next, I'm going to create a if else statement. And you're going to see the difference quickly um, you know, between this beautiful one-liner and this code block. I'm going to look for the password, and I'm going to use a greater or equal than flag here, and check if the password essentially is greater or equal than 8. So typically today, if a password is you know larger than 8, it kind of passes, whereas it used to be 6. right? Then, if that's true, we're going to echo out our success color here. We're going to open up our string, and we're going to say password length looks good. So else, we're going to echo out something else. We're going to say, hey, try writing a longer password, right? I'm going to go ahead and clear out the color and feet to end the block. So I hope you can see the difference immediately from this block and this segment here. And I actually made a mistake. It's not clean, it's clear. All right, that's one down. And so, you know, sometimes users will enter in their phone numbers as a password, which is kind of bad practice. So in this section, I'm going to let the user know if they're using only numbers in their password to use some letters. I'm going to use backticks for this. I'm going to echo out. E, and I'm going to use some uh, syntax off screen, pull out all the numbers, little regex. And you don't have to put that in quotes, actually. You'll see in a second. It'll, it'll throw back a, an error, or it might not work if you put this in quotes. All right, next I'm going to create an if statement. 
So if number only is, and this is a really, really dirty code here, and you're going to see why in just a second. <laughs> so if number only is not equal to, you know, an empty string, then we're going to echo out the warning text here. Let's go ahead and clear the color. So what we're doing here is we're assigning a string, um, which in this case would be full of numbers if there are any numbers given in the password that the user passes. We're assigning that to a variable called number only, and we're asking if number only um, doesn't equal an empty string, then we're going to actually go ahead and um, echo out this warning here, letting the user know that they should probably be using some letters in their password. And the point of this isn't to do something beautiful. The point of this is just actually to show you um, a few different ways to write your conditionals. Next, I'm going to look for special characters. We're going to use back ticks again. So here we're going to echo out the password, looking for the punctuation marks, and then assign it to this special characters here. So what we're going to do here is use a POSIX character class because it's going to be much simpler than doing um, this mess. So we don't have to actually use um, sort of syntax like this. We can use different classes that are provided for us. So for punctuation, we're going to say punct. Now we're going to write our condition. So else we didn't find any special characters. Let's let the user know they should probably be using some special characters. So this one essentially is grepping out the punctuation mark that might be present, or many punctuation marks that might be present in the password variable that the user passes to us. We're going to assign that to this variable special characters. And if special characters is not equal to an empty string, we're going to say, hey, great job, we detected special characters. Else, warning, and you guys should probably be using some special characters in your passwords. I'm going to go ahead and save this. OK, so let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to use the password, password123. Ooh, I have some errors here. 12 and 20. One second, I'm going to take a look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ooh, these little buggers are space sensitive, so you need to be very careful. All right, so that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Ooh, here we go again. Same issue, space sensitivity. It'll get you every time. Here we go. Let's go ahead and run this again. I'm going to use the same password just for simplicity. All right, cool. So we see a few things here. So like I mentioned before, the W flag in our grep statement is looking for partial matches. Okay. So we typed in password123, which is here at the end of this password here. And it's at the beginning of, it is this password here, and it's at the beginning of this password, as you can see. So it is looking for partial matches. And we know that it's an exploitable password because it is in our very large database. And just to show you how big that um, text file is, let's do a disk usage human readable for 134 megabytes. That is huge, right? We also see that, you know, password 123, the length is okay, but we're not using special characters and we probably should be. Let's do another case study where the user is actually using their phone number, which so many people do. So let's run this again and let's just do some sort of arbitrary phone number. Right? So it did find that one <laughs> example here is of all of these fives. It is an exploitable password. The length is good, but hey, you know, you should probably be using some letters in your password, and special characters is advised as well. So let's give a great example of what a good password should look like. Okay, we'll do an exclamation mark, a seven, capital Y, R, T, three hash, something like that. Okay, hey, look, it is not an exploitable password, one that's known at least to our rock you text. The, uh, oh, we should try writing a longer one. Looks like we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. I made a mistake. But we detected a special character, which is good. So let's run that again. We'll do kind of the same thing just for simplicity. And I'll put that here. And do this. Great. All pass, right? We're not using a known exploitable password in our text database. Um, the length looks good, and we detected a special character. All good things, right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.